Shalom, Shalom, Rastafari. Ah, Salam tonight, Ena is Elena, Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. And I'm waiting for a brother in to like check I right here, but this is uh, seven. Well, actually, it's the, it's the Sabbath now, so Shabbat Shalom once again, Senbet Salam, Senbet Salam. We're going to get into this biblical portion, this reading and feeding. But no doubt, you all have heard about this um, Batman, this old Batman massacre. Um, or the movie massacre. Um, forget what the exact number is now. First they said 12 and 50 people. Now I think it's gone to 14. Or and there's a bunch of ones critical. Um, in this most recent example of um, the degeneration of this system of things. Really, it's, it's about white supremacy. People don't want to say that. They say, oh, it's a bad thing. You can't say it's white or black because, you know, black people kill black people. Yeah, but not not, not like this. Not like this. Yeah, we, we might have some of these kind of so-called incidences, but this notice is in the same place as um, Columbine. The whole bowling for Columbine, you know, bo Columbine, the Columbine incident. Now, there's more to that that most folks, if they haven't done their own independent re research into it, there's um, a series of, um, of uh, cross TV vids, and it's probably out there on the YouTubes. And those who haven't seen it, this would be a very good kind of eye opener, especially now with the most recent um, this Batman Dark Knight Rises, Lucifer Rising, really, that's really more what it's about. Um, Lucifer Rising, interesting, the numbers too. Because this is 720, it occurred on 720, 720, 360, and 360 is 720. Three, a trinity of it would be 1080. So will the next incident be on October 8th or something like that? Well, just maybe, maybe not. Who, who, who knows? You understand? John knows. But what we do know is that this is just another, another sign. Now, notice how they're backpedaling to say this guy, he had no criminal record. All the guns were legal. Um, he's uh, he graduated um, um, cum laude. You know, like all this high high degrees. He's so called very intelligent. Remember, we're talking about intelligence too. That the Bible teaches us that knowledge puffs up, but it's charity. It's love. You know, and when we say love, biblically speaking, we're speaking about the love that conforms to the love of our Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Anything else, basically, you're going to get a whole different type of fruit. And this is why you're seeing this kind of, um, this kind of uh, the fruit. You can judge it by the fruit. But they're saying this guy they had no criminal record. Even his mama said, his mama said, this Holmes guy, whatever, his, his, his mama said, um, oh, you got, the right, you got the right guy. You know, you got the right guy, the right guy. So why am I calling this Rastafari um, um, and the gun? You understand, in light of this most recent incident. I think this is very, very important that we understand what's really going on. Now, some of the politicians like Bloomberg, he's basically been on this um, crackdown on guns. And recently they've been doing this stop and frisk thing in, in um, the New York uh, area, especially among so-called minorities. But if you check 2020, check 2020. 2020 had a, a special. All of them had some sort of special, especially tonight. Friday, so-called night, because of the incident that occurred um, um, over from Thursday into Friday morning, because this thing was a midnight showing, a midnight showing. Now, I know there's a lot of folks who probably doing a lot of research on this and part of the whole exposed and, and, and the, the whole con so-called conspiracy reality will probably be able to connect a lot much more of the dots to this. But here is what is particularly thought-provoking and particularly interesting. Um, Philip, uh, I think his name is Philip Zimbardo. Philip Zimbardo. Uh, he wrote a book and has done a research called The Lucifer Effect. The Lucifer Effect. Could he call it Dark Night? The Dark Night Rises. Now, already they're trying to get out ahead of this, you know, get out ahead of this story and say that it's not the violence in the media, it's not the violence, it's glorification of violence. You know, if faith comes by hearing, then, in other words, if you have, if your faith, what you believe, it might be determined and is determinable on what you hear, 
And how much more on when you hear this and see this incessantly and repeatedly? No, this doesn't mean that just because you have violence in the movie or something like that, everybody's going to go out and do some, some sort of violence. But what about this? How do you explain this? Or how do you try to explain this away? You understand? And how do we as Rastafari look at this in, in the perspective of His Majesty? This is what I want to say on this particular recent incident. It's just like the bowl, it's just like I about to say bowling for Columbine. Um, this is maybe a, a slip because I want to speak about Michael Moore. Michael Moore's movie. Remember Michael Moore's movie? Bowling for Columbine. If you really want to understand what's going on here, and why is it usually, of course, they'll say it was the sniper. Remember the sniper, Mohammed and Malvo? You know, Mohammed, that guy Mohammed, the sniper, Washington, D.C. sniper, whatever like that, he was a trained um, United States sniper. You understand? So now we know that a lot of so-called stuff goes on behind the closed doors. Even a lot of the military people have been coming out. We know the story of um, the CIA agent, Bill Cooper, you understand, who basically exposed certain things. There have been others who have been exposing the evil. But we have to go to the beginning. In other words, if we want to understand what's going on now or even comprehend what's going on now, we have to get to the beginning. You understand? Get to the very root. How did it all begin? And so Bowling for Columbine figures in this importantly. Remember the cartoon? There was a cartoon in Bowling for Columbine. If you go back and look at that cartoon, I think you can see it on the YouTubes. It's out there. So look for Bowling for Columbine, the cartoon. It might have a particular name, but it was from Bowling for Columbine, Michael Moore's movie. That cartoon explains the, explains the whole picture to it. And it seems as though a lot of people are trying to avoid that particular reality. Now, the next point is this, concerning heroism, because we saw this in a 2020 clip. In a 2020 clip, they had um, Philip uh, Zimbardo. I think we have some of the psychological psychology videos, the whole psychology, psych, psychology video set, and he was the, like, it was on PBS years ago, back in the 70s or 80s or whatever, but it's very, very Good. I mean, it's, I mean, it's very, very. You could learn a lot about it, and the way he teaches, he teaches in a very, um, of easy to learn way. But he's doing a new thing called the hero, heroic um, research or heroic institute. You know, it's why are some people heroes? And in this particular um, incident, um, once again, black people. Um, so-called lost sheep, black, uh, Negroes, blacks, colored, 14, 13, 14 men, men citizens, you know, you know all that. But basically black folks in America, once again, have shown and proven themselves to be heroes. Now, we know behind the hero is the Horus, the Heru, so forth and so on. But, it, but he asks this question. Philip Zimbardo asks this question in the research. And you can look it up, Zimbardo. And, and, and the 2020, I don't think they uploaded it just yet, but it was on the 2020. It was a portion of their special 2020 on this whole um, movie massacre, Batman massacre. Who knows what name they're going to finally settle on because there's a lot of different names circulating right now about this particular 72012 or 7, 72012. Look at that, 72012. There's going to be a whole bunch of folks going to be dealing with that. And, some of it probably is very accurate and very true. We're not going there right now. We're just focusing on um, what Philip Zimbardo said concerning the fact that black people are eight times, notice this, eight times more likely to show, demonstrate, and display heroism or heroic acts on behalf of others, whether the others are Black, white, we think maybe a little more because of programming for white, but it's still in our nature to be Horus. It's in our nature to be Haru. You understand? Eight times more likely than Caucasian. Now, here we have a, a, a I don't know if it's award-winning so much, but uh, somebody who in the industry of psychology, Philip Zimbardo, who really has, um, earned his stripes for his research, knowledge, and accuracy concerning the mind, the psychology, the soul, so forth and so on, and, and being accurate with his um, studies and his uh, 
um, I won't say predictions so much, but his qualifications and of, of the data, you know, weighing and balancing the data, interpreting the data. And he says that blacks are eight times more likely to be heroes and to demonstrate heroism, especially in inner city, in the cities, more heroes are likely than in the country, which is kind of interesting as well. Um, in fact, you have more gun owners, you notice something, in the country, in like the West, what we, in the Western states, the West bubble, exclusive, deleted, deleted states, so forth and so on, than you do in prior to cities. In the cities, we get to stop and frisk, and yes, there's a lot of illegal guns floating around. Um, yes, there's a lot of black-on-black -black violence, you know, going on in our communities. You'll see that these things are solvable. They are remediable. They can be remedied. But as long as we keep going for the old white supremacy's watered-down yoke-doke, it ain't going to go nowhere. It gets worse and worse. You know, if we now apply our own God-given hearts and minds to the situation and we show ourselves as mine, in the same way blacks show themselves to be heroes, eight times more likely than so-called uh, uh, Caucasians, Goyim, Gentiles, but foreign European nationals, okay, they show themselves more likely to be heroes. And they said Hispanic males more likely to show themselves and demonstrate acts of heroism on behalf of others, on behalf of other people who are in trouble. I just think that is such an interesting Statistic right there, especially since if you look at some of the, the, the pictures about this incident, you see a lot of black people who have been affected by this and a lot of black people who have displayed heroism to save others, not, not regardless of race or, you know, what a person, the parents are look like. And we know that is not quite the same thing when we look at America, you know, we're saying with three K's in it, America, when we look at real America. Now, there was another statistic that kind of caught my attention. This is a commentary on this particular issue. I probably will save the issue about the gun maybe for the next vid. And we've talked on this, touched on this as well, but it kind of connects with the next um, Nightline, Nightline, which is part of 2020 ABC, ABC is part of Disney, so forth and so on. Boom. But they had a, a little series of statistics that they show because now you have ones like Bloomberg, and ones who are about so-called gun control. They said we need more gun control. But what's interesting is that crime is actually down when more people have a right to their, what is it, Second Amendment right, the right to bear arms, that, that, that crime is actually down more when more people are armed. It's just unfortunate that the majority of folks who are armed, and this is where you got to look at and insert here, you have to insert the vid, um, the cartoon from, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Michael Moore's um, Bowling for Columbine. Because the Bowling for Columbine cartoon, it's interesting, it's funny, it's enjoyable, but you really have to get the point. He really made a, a real good point. Because remember, it's Michael Moore who wrote the book, Remember the book he wrote? Some of you may, may forget. Stupid white men. Oh, stupid white men? Stupid white males? I think it's stupid white men. You understand how white men, or really white supremacy in itself in principle is stupid. But if we want to really figure out why is this going on? See, some folks will tell you um, we need more gun control. We need to take the guns off the streets. No. Really, people need to have the right to defend themselves. People, it, it's criminals and ones who are doing criminal acts, murderers and other people who are, who are doing violence against people, and this is provable, you know, in, in, a, in a balanced court of law, not in this kind of blindfolded, ignorant, white supremacist injustice that's called justice, but in a, in a true system of law. Look at this. America has more violent gun-related crime than 22 of the richest nations in the world, coming from a Euro, Gentile, Eurocentric perspective. So we're talking about Europe and the European nations as a majority and some of the Asian nations as well, and maybe, you know, maybe some of the, uh, maybe the Bahrain or whatever like that has low crime, so forth and so on, and maybe some places in, in South Central America. We, we don't know which nation, but the majority of the nations are European nations. Now, we know that the European 
you know what I'm saying? He lives by the gun. The last 400, 500 or so years of human history tells us that they live by the gun. But here's, here's the faith. Here's the patient of the saints, Revelation. It says, he who lives by the sword shall what? Die by the sword. He who takes into captivity must, not might be, but must be taken into captivity. And this is what worries some of them. This is why they're getting all armed up for some, like, last-day battle against God and Christ when he establishes his kingdom on this earth. They're not fighting against, really, us. They already have us in this system of things. They've already set up their, their Greco-Roman, European, Gentile system almost over all the world. That's why most folks can probably understand this in the English language. They, they know English because they have ruled through this guns and violence and so forth and so on. But the question still remains, why is America so violent? I mean, I mean, why does, um, they said there's more, and everybody don't have guns. I mean, I mean, people might have access to guns, but everybody don't have guns legally. And even this guy, this Holmes, whatever his name, this, this James, whatever, J. Holmes, whatever guy, you understand, this killer, this murderer. Now, watch how they try to, try to you know, um, be the devil's advocate. Watch the devil's advocacy in this. They already said that movies have, just the violence in the movies don't have anything to do with it. While studies have shown that ones are more inclined to, because see, morality in the Bible, you know what I'm I know a lot of folks against the Bible, right? That, you know, people are like, oh, the Bible, rah, rah. the Bible is the reason why they enslave people. No, the misinterpretation of the Bible, you know what I'm saying, has that white Jesus, has that devil on the, that devil on the cross that people worship. That's the Antichrist right there. This is why, if, just think about it for a moment. If the killer the Batman killer, the Joker, the real Joker, right? If this Joker right here was a so-called black man, you remember when that Asian guy at Virginia Tech or whatever did it? They had to even calm down a lot of the, you could, you could hear the racism coming out because he was an Asian. But they piped down, they calmed down on that. You understand? And they were talking about his family and what responsibility his family bears. And the family, did, the family was doing whatever they were doing, and, and he was having the problems that he was having, and, and he had the breakdown that he had, and he killed the people that he killed. But now notice in this particular case, he's a bright guy. He's, he's a doctor. You understand? He graduated, you know, with high, high honors. You know what I mean? And then when he graduated, he could not find a job in his particular profession. He had to work at McDonald's. How humiliating. And, and this is it's justifying this. They're probably going to go for the crazy thing that he had a temporary, what, a temporary insanity. That means in the moment that he was killing innocent men, women, and little babies. What, were, what was a three-month, what, 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 what were three-month-old babies doing at, 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 at 12 midnight, around that time, 11, 12 midnight, outdoors in a movie theater. What, what, what were little children like a three-month, it was a three-month-old, I think, the one that was wounded, but not, let's say thankfully, it was for the parents and all concerned, but thankfully they wasn't killed. But what's a three-month-old? Isn't that somehow like child abuse or something is not being, somebody's not taking proper parental uh, discretion or care? Shouldn't, shouldn't somebody be looked in? For that, shouldn't these agencies come in and investigate? Well, we're happy that the, the three-month-old wasn't killed, but what is the three-month-old doing out in the movies? Like the three-month-old really wanted, three-month-old was like, uh, or, 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 or they could not find nobody to babysit, so that justifies it. Really? What do you think? You understand? Um, this is just a couple of points that's been turning around. You know, and we've been reasoning on it for a couple of other folks. But the main thing is check out the bowling for Columbine. You need to check out that bowling for Columbine cartoon, the cartoon. The cartoon is maybe about 10, 5, 10, maybe 15 minutes long or so. But check that out because it's really how did this nation, how did this country, how did it start, how did it all begin? You understand? Look what happened to the American Indian. You have Europeans coming from Europe, 
you understand, with their own um, misinterpretation of biblical ideas, you understand, and saying that America was given to them, right? And they had the charters from England halfway across the water, you understand, that gave them the right to come over. They came over here with guns, you understand? The Indians were kindly, some of them was, some of the Indians wasn't kind to these so-called um, invaders or immigrants, See, the same way they deal with the Mexicans, you see how they deal with the Mexicans, you see how they deal with the Hispanic people, you see, you see what's going on, you see what goes around, right, comes around. What goes around comes around, and this is where we are at presently. Then they brought over black folks from Africa, right, they enslaved black folks, who we know as the lost sheep of the Beta Israel, you know what I'm saying, from Africa. Most black people don't even know that. That's why they're so lost, because they don't even know who they really are. They are living in the image of a beast. You know what I'm saying? And watch, when you have a black man, if that person was a black man, right, or a Hispanic, if it was a Hispanic person who did it, even if they were a legal immigrant, they would say, this is why we have to step up on immigration and stop and protect the borders and can't such and such, such and such, such and such, so forth and so on, keep America American. Can you believe it? I mean, I mean, just think about the insanity before heaven. I mean, it's really, really insane. But if this was a, a, a Hispanic or a, or a black person, you could just imagine. You understand? But now, because it's not, ask white folks, why do you white folks always do this? Especially in the media and others. Why you always, you're saying it's not the movies. Movies don't make ones violent. Well, movies in themselves don't make one violent if they have some moral foundation. But get this, America hasn't really had any real moral foundation. The moral foundation began to collapse 40 years ago when he took the Bible out of uh, classrooms and any idea of God and, and, and put religion over in the corner and bringing all these, all these so-called um, Eastern philosophies, is that what they call it? Eastern philosophies and stuff like that, Hare Krishna and stuff like that, so forth and so on. Next movie or documentary you need to check out is um, uh, They Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll. Some of you may have seen it, but there's a large part of it that really deals with the Columbine incident. You know, in other words, what drove, based on evidence, there's something good about that particular series of documentaries. They actually have references and evidences in it. And what I noticed that whenever they talk about the Columbine thing, they don't talk about the anti-Christianism. You understand? Um, of, let's get to the spirituality. We already know Christ is black. Some folks don't know. They think that that white guy who is Cesar Borgia is the real guy. But let's get beyond it. To those folks who, regardless of the imagery, the whitewashed image, they really try to live the way that Christ teaches. They try to accept Christ in spirit and truth. That means they, they, they try not to have any racist or racial kind of nasty, they, they try not to have any white supremacy yuck yuck, right, in them. You understand? That's what happened to those, those children in school. Those guys, those two guys, whatever their names were, and you know, we don't want to kill